ready to drink Coca-Cola. Yeah, whenever you pour a Coca-Cola into a glass right then and there, it's ready to drink. Really, unless you want to make it as sweet as, say, Pepsi. If you did, then you'd have to add some sweetener. You'd have to spoon it. You'd have to stir it up. Then drink it, because Pepsi's sweeter. See, that's the beauty of Coke. The only thing you have to do to make a perfect Coca-Cola is pour it. Maybe add some ice. Ready to drink Coca-Cola now. Coke is in. Attention Pepsi drinkers, introducing the new taste of Coca-Cola, the best Coca-Cola ever. That's all I'm going to say. In fact, that's all I have to say. No more words. This stuff is great. I'm sorry. I'm really, I'm sorry. Whew. Can you believe it? They're still doing it. Look here, these guys had a taste test against Coca-Cola. They did too. These guys are still at it. And these guys compared themselves to Coke. All those colas going around comparing themselves to Coke. Now maybe that's why they call Coke the real thing. Refreshing, delicious, ice cold Coca-Cola. This is the one that makes me smile. Just like that, I saw you. She saw you too. See, look, they were smiling, see? Show your hands on you. One on your TV. <laughs> you know this you have never seen before because i just made it up <laughs> the sweeter cola machine pepsi rc like c and c where's coke coke does not live in that neighborhood because coke is sweetened less than all of those now what does that mean to me less sweet means more thirst quenching more refreshing more real cola taste better with food better when i'm really hot better play the music because this is going to take a while coke is it. thank you bolder cleaner smarter more delicioso a strange affliction has come over all the young people in the land. They cannot walk. Hey, Dad, can you give us a ride to Doug's house? Doug's house is two blocks away. Can't walk to the show. Three blocks away. They can dance. 317 hours in a row, but they cannot walk. You wonder why they don't tie their sneakers? Why should they? They never walk anywhere. How did they get to the refrigerator to get that last bottle of Coca-Cola? Somebody must have given them a ride. But at least they know Coke is it. Bacon, cheeseburger, medium rare, lettuce, tomato, onion, and ketchup. Big, ice cold, frosty Coca-Cola next to it. Look at that, huh? Perfectness. This is real refreshment, real big taste. Now, see, if you were another cola, number two or number 29, you'd do taste tests and challenges and stuff and try and compare yourself to this, wouldn't you? Sure, don't shake your head now. You would too, you sneaky devil. See, that's why they call this the real thing. Yes, it is. Coca-Cola is it. Can you believe it? They're still trying to compare themselves to Coca-Cola. But these guys tried it. These guys tried it. These guys tried it. These guys tried it too. And these guys are still comparing themselves to Coca-Cola. Are you kidding me? Well, you see, maybe that's why they call Coca-Cola the real thing. Because it's delicious and refreshing. And it makes me smile. Yeah, like that. I saw you smile. You did like this. You said... The incredible has happened. The impossible has become a reality. Coke actually tastes better than ever before. Yes, Coke has a new taste. And I'm standing here with this ice-cold, thirst-quenching, deliciously satisfying Coca-Cola, and it actually tastes better. Now, you know me. I always loved Coke for years and years. I like this Coke better. The new taste of Coca-Cola, better than ever before. Now, more than ever, Coke is it. I will now predict the exact moment in time when every single one of you will enjoy the best tasting Coca-Cola ever. It will be the very moment that you pick up this can, because inside this can is the new taste of Coca-Cola. The best tasting Coca-Cola ever. You will taste the new taste immediately, and you will like it a lot. Now, if you're a Coke drinker, wait till you taste this one. If you're a Pepsi drinker, well, I predict we're going to be real friendly from here on in for a long, long time. Coke, the Thirst Buster, the biggest bottle of Coke around. Hey, you don't want to run out of Coca-Cola. Get Thirst Buster and say, I ain't afraid of no thirst. We go call Thirst Buster. Thirst Buster.
So as a result of this, we're asking you tonight to go out and tell your neighbors not to buy Coca-Cola in Memphis. I think one of the greatest untold stories of the 20th century is the collusion between corporations, especially in America, and Nazi Germany. First in terms of how the corporations from America helped to essentially rebuild Germany and support the early Nazi regime, and then when the war broke out, figured out a way to keep everything going. So General Motors was able to keep Opel going. Ford was able to keep their thing going and companies like Coca-Cola because they couldn't keep the Coca-Cola going so what they did was they invented Fanta Orange for the Germans and that's how Coke was able to keep their profits coming in to Coca-Cola so when you drink Fanta Orange that's the Nazi drink that was created so that Coke could continue making money while millions of people died when Hitler came to power in 1933, his goal was to dismantle and destroy the Jewish community. This was an enterprise so fast that it required the resources of a computer. But in 1933, there was no computer. What there was was the IBM punch card system, which controlled and stored information based upon the holes that were punched in various rows and columns. Naturally, there was no off-the-shelf software as there is today. Each application was custom designed and an engineer had to personally configure it. Millions of people of all religions and nationalities and characteristics went through the concentration camp system. That's an extraordinary traffic management program that required an IBM system in every railroad direction and an IBM system in every concentration camp. Now, this is a typical prisoner card. There are little boxes where all the information is to be punched in. We compare this information to the code sheet for concentration camps. And here you see Auschwitz is one, Buchenwald two, Dachau is three. Now, what kinds of prisoners were they? They could be a Jehovah's Witness for two, a homosexual for three, communist for six, or a Jew would be eight. Now, what was their status? One was released, two was transferred, Four was executed, five was suicide, and six. Code six, Zonderbehandlung, special treatment, meant the gas chamber or sometimes a bullet. They would punch that number in, the material was tabulated, the machines were set, and of course the punch cards by the millions had to be printed, and they were printed exclusively by IBM, and the profits were recovered just after the war. I really do believe that that particular accusation has been fairly discredited as a serious accusation. That is, the fact that they have used equipment, you know, that is a fact, but how they got it, how much cooperation they got, and any kind of collusion trying to connect dots that are not connected, I think that's the part that is discredited. Generally, you sell computers and they're used in a variety of ways and you always hope they're used in the more positive ways possible. If you ever found out they are used in ways that are not positive, then you would hope that you stop supporting that. But do you always know? Can you always tell? Can you always find out? IBM would of course say that it had no control over its German subsidiary, but here on October 9th of 1941, a letter is being written directly to Thomas J. Watson with all sorts of detail about the activities of the uh, German subsidiary. None of these machines were uh, sold, they were all leased by IBM, and they had to be serviced on site once a month, even if that was at a concentration camp such as Dachau Buchenwald. This is a typical uh, contract with IBM and the Third Reich which was instituted in 1942. 
It's not with the Dutch subsidiary. It's not with the German subsidiary. It is with the IBM Corporation in New York.